sports fans, ASMR Sports back in your business. Well, today we've got some um, kind of new type of content that I've been thinking about doing for a little while. We will be uh, looking through some kind of current events, going through uh, Google News, top headlines, and uh, seeing what's going on in the world. Um, and maybe talking about it a little bit. Um, but uh, our, uh, I guess this is kind of a, a twofer video because um, I've been doing sort of videos where I just kind of do a little like review of a candy product. Um, and I will be kind of trying to do a mini review of this one. But once, once we're done with that, I'm gonna jump over to the news that's set up uh, right over here. And then, uh, you can see the gummy, the camera in the bottom right there. So hopefully that uh, works well for this type of video. All right, today, folks, we've got I, I, Issei, I don't know how you pronounce that, Issei, um, mocha gummies, chewy candy, strawberry flavored. Um, boy, these folks, these things are not, uh, these are not cheap. $7.81 for this little bag, which is only 1.76 ounces. That's extraordinarily expensive by any measure, but, uh, I was kind of intrigued by the concept here of mochi gummies, if you've never had, um, mochi, it's like a, um, it's like a real sort of, uh, I don't know, bouncy, rubbery, um, kind of, um, sweet. Um, um, I don't know what you, uh, uh, <laughs> like substance, um, that's used in a variety of different ways in, uh, Japanese cooking, uh, a lot of people are familiar with because they've become more popular in the last, um, you know, probably five, six, seven years, but they have mochi ice cream, which is basically the mochi, um, you know, kind of gummy stuff, um, wrapped around, like, uh, you know, like a bit, like a dough wrapped around a, you know, little, um, disc of ice cream. Those are very popular in some places. Um, but, uh, before, before those even existed, at least in the United States, um, you know, there was like, um, different kind of mochi, like sort of savory products, like kind of dumpling stuff. And actually, um, they're often sweet. They'll have like a sweet filling in them and they'll be eaten like as dessert. Um, so anyways, um, if you've had those, you, you know, you know, kind of what the consistency and what the sort of texture of that mochi stuff is. And, um, making gummies out of it seems to make a lot of sense. So you might ask yourself, what exactly is in, like, mochi, and, um, you know, the kind that I refer to being used in different, um, Japanese cuisine, I think is made primarily with, um, rice, rice flour, and, uh, I'm not sure what else, there's gotta be maybe something else in there, but I don't know, other than water, you know, and sugar or whatever, um, but I don't know what, but this, this, uh, does have rice flour in it, along with, uh, you know, different kinds of syrups and sugars for sweeteners, and, uh, some starch, and then flavors and stuff, so, uh, this is a, you know, kind of a natural product, it's got beet juice for flavor, so no artificial flavors, um, no artificial colors either, I'm sorry, I'm fla- uh, no, yeah, no artificial flavors or colors, I should say, there's a picture of them right there, but we're gonna get right into these. It says, uh, Issei mochi gummies are inspired by the treasured ancient Japanese tradition of mochi treats, a truly delightful snack. Drawing on my Japanese heritage, I create Issei, or Issei, uh, mo mochi gummies, delicious chewy snacks infused with beautifully subtle natural flavors for my own family. Okay, Mika Shino, founder and CEO. Let's get into it. Boy, um, as soon as I open that, I got a nice scent of strawberry, fruity. 
things. So um, there you go. Uh, you can see they're kind of. Um, oh man, what did I do with that piece of paper? Actually, you know what I've got? This little styrofoam. Got like a little presentation block. Um, some of these on here.
first two states are Iowa and New Hampshire. And, um, man, I hope there's no, like, audio that jumps in on any of these pages, but the first two, um, states were kind of, um, unusual in that, uh, maybe not unusual, but they were unique <laughs> as compared to Carolina in that one, um, only had a Republican, um, primary, so there was no Democratic one happening at that time. Um, the other one, I feel like, um, Biden was left off the, the, um, ballot because, like, um, um, there, uh, what it was is that, uh, the D, the DNC wanted a different state. They wanted South Carolina to be first. So basically they said, <coughs> I don't know, there was some like, you know, reason why the disagreement between the DNC <coughs> and the state that, uh, is ordinarily the first democratic, uh, primary, um, such that it was just uh, the case that Biden was just left off the ballot. Um, so he, he was, I think, kind of like a write-in winner of that one. And uh, basically the South Carolina one um, was the first chance for, you know, basically people to vote, for Democrats to vote with him on the ballot. So the question was, he's one of these kind of, um, you know, dark horse candidates um, going to, you know, take a significant amount of, of votes answer to that being, you know, clearly not. Uh, he won like 96% of the vote here with, uh, let's see, 90% of the vote, 97% of the vote in, so clearly that's the result. So I think that's probably a very good result for uh, a Biden. I mean, it was assumed he would win it, but the question was, would, you know, one of these other candidates get uh, a sizable amount of votes, like maybe more than 5%. Um, if you've never heard of these uh, people, I can't blame you. Um, Marianne Williamson is this kind of, um, um, sort of, <laughs> she's sort of like a, you know, a hippy dippy, um, kind of spacey, space cadet, I like to say, you know, who probably does a lot of yoga and, um, you know, chanting mantras and stuff like that, who seems to run every year. Um, probably just to kind of get some, uh, you know, name recognition for her. I think she's an author and has like a, maybe a, like a, a news website or something like that. I can't remember what her game is actually, but she's always uh, in these primaries, it seems, for the, fact, the last several of them. And Dean Phillips is a bit more interesting. He, I think, is a, a current um, Congress critter and uh, he basically ran on, I think I heard an interview of him, um, like, several months ago, where basically he ran on the theory that Joe Biden can't win against Trump, and so, like, he wanted to have an option for people, like, he was saying he wanted other people to run, but nobody was running, so he's like, okay, I'm just gonna run. So not, not very compelling, um, I don't think, to a lot of people, apparently. And then, at least not in South Carolina. Um, so anyways, he ran, and, you know, I think the idea was maybe he could be sort of a protest vote for people who are not pleased with, you know, Joe Biden, but they're Democrats. And uh, that doesn't seem to have panned out for Dean Phillips. Yeah, he's from Minnesota, um, so he's kind of local to me. I'm over in North Dakota. So, anyways, um, so there you have it. So, so, so South Carolina, the DNC wants to be, you know, the, the first Democratic primary. Um, and uh, so far, Iowa, I think it's Iowa, is not playing along with that. Let's see what else we got. Oh, we got uh, some Middle East action here for those of you who follow what's going on. In the Middle East, um, uh, something like a week ago, um, there was some attacks on the U.S. on U.S. assets overseas, uh, U.S. military assets overseas by some uh, like um, Iranian, you know, backed or funded or supported um, kind of uh, terrorist groups. And they killed three American soldiers, which is a very bad thing. Um, and, uh, you know, when that happened, it was really the first time that Americans had, um, I think, died, um, you know, by military action um, uh, from any of 
kind of the assortment of Middle Eastern um, terrorist or Islamist uh, groups um, in quite some time. So, you know, uh, there was a lot of, you know, news about what was going to be done, what, what different, you know, politicians were saying about it. Um, some people were suggesting, I think, that a strike within Iran could make sense uh, or could be justified, but there was also reporting that, like, you know, Iran was saying, or that that um, uh, some, like, analysts, some, like, military analysts were worried that if, um, if we struck in Iran, then Iran, which is currently not nuclear capable, but they could accelerate their uh, nuclear weapons program as a response and um, try to get nuclear weapons much sooner than they are, but it seems to be inevitable that they're, you know, like going to get nuclear weapons sometime in the next couple of years at least, and that could, you know, be pushed up. The, the fear is if uh, they get, you know, pulled directly into a war instead of, uh, you know, being a proxy for um, some of these other, uh, or these other organizations being proxy for Iran. Um, so, anyways, uh, the news from today on Iran and this uh, this uh, sort of conflict between the U.S. and Iranian-backed terrorist groups um, is that the U.S. struck um, many targets. It was like, I feel like there was, it was like a lot, a ton of targets, like, um, and this is actually, I think, the second day of, um, of, uh, strikes. Oh, they're not going to pay well, man. Um, so like yesterday, there was a bunch, and then today, yesterday they were striking in, um, like Syria and, uh, oh gosh, where else? like Jordan or something and um, today they're striking in Yemen where the Houthis uh, are based out of the Houthis are the ones that are have been um, like attacking merchant ships like um, cargo ships going through um, a canal that you know is um, that their country borders and that's a major problem because that's like a, a busy shipping lane and a lot of stuff goes through there and if like suddenly can't go through there um, because you might get, you know, a missile uh, on your ship, then you got to go way around uh, like Africa and it um, takes way longer, makes things way more expensive. So it's a big problem. And uh, yeah, the U.S. has been, you know, kind of patrolling those waters and trying to protect ships and um, it's kind of a kind of a mess there. Uh, let's see. I've been reading about these uh, floods that are going to be um, happening in Southern California, apparently. But I have not paid too much attention. If you're in Southern California, I wonder if you've been kind of worried about this. If you live in the area that's supposed to be flooded. Um, but uh, it reminds me of like, um, I think it was last year. In Vermont, there was a bunch of flooding, and I had, I've been I've been to Vermont quite a few times from when I lived in New England, in Boston. Um, so some of the areas that were getting like totally flooded, um, were, you know, uh, cities I'd been to, and it was kind of a bummer to see that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Super Bowl coming up, so there's some Taylor Swift news about that. Um, well, it's kind of funny, they don't really have like a lot, I feel, in the um, top news here. So here's more news. Uh, what else is going on in the world of news? Um, Oh, there's this whole thing going on in, in Texas that I was actually, um, I was listening to a, a news story, an NPR story on this to 
kind of explain what is happening. And I kind of got interrupted by um, some just some family stuff, but um, I was hoping I was hoping to hear it because I, I, I you know I've seen new news headlines. Um, and uh, I know like little tiny bits and pieces, but not not much. But basically, what happened is uh, there was like a dispute over um, whether uh, the federal government, namely the Department of Homeland Security, which you know covers the border patrol, um, whether they could remove um, some razor wire and some. Uh, I, I think like buoys or something. I think there were like, like kind of barriers uh, in the um, Rio Grande River meant to stop people from who were swimming from being able to cross the river. Both of these things being, you know, quite quite uh, dangerous um, to people who are um, admittedly crossing the border unlawfully. Um, but uh, the the uh, the you know the border folks, the federal um, government wanted to like remove that stuff because they didn't like put that up and they're like uh yeah this is like this is not your um this is not your jurisdiction like are we 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 cover we handle the border we decide what measures are taken on it and stuff like that so there was this disagreement and uh it, it you know went through the court system went all the way to the supreme court and the supreme court by a five to four vote said that the federal government you know does make those decisions they do control what means and measures are taken um, on the border to prevent, uh, you know, migrants from crossing, and uh, they have the, you know, they have the lawful right to take those, you know, those things down from the border um, uh, walls and, and, and in the river and stuff, and um, so uh, Texas, in response, said, uh, you know, when I say Texas, I kind of, I really mean their governor, Greg Abbott, you know, said um, they're they're basically not going to comply. That they have a right to um, you know defend their border any way they want because you know it's like their state that people are going to be coming into illegally if they if they don't take these measures, which they feel you know I guess are effective. Um, and so I, uh, then I then basically I heard. Um, like a bunch of, you know, kind of citizens are going to roll on up to the border and like kind of like protest or like stop the federal government from, you know, doing the things that the Supreme Court basically said they had the right to do. Um, I really don't know if anything has happened, um, um, like, you know, in the way of a clash between the federal government and the private citizens who have gone up there or... I think, um, like, um, well, Texas obviously has the National Guard, you know, Texas, um, you know, troops, base troops in the, in the National Guard. And I think they also have, like, a state guard thing, which I guess is, like, kind of like a police force of some kind. And so those, you know, those uh, kind of troops are, are theoretically involved as well. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't think much would come of a conflict between like citizens and the federal government, but I do think there could be a, a, a much uh, nastier conflict if like, you know, some, some troops that are under the command of um, Greg Abbott are, you know, resisting um, like federal um, uh, officials or, or um, you know, employees or whatever that are trying to do things on the border that they have the right to do, according to the Supreme Court. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I think a, lo a lot of this is, is just kind of like, um, you know, it's grandstanding. Um, and uh, pr probably not much is going to happen. <laughs> um, I did see that, like, um, t 25 governors, you know, all, all, all Republicans, basically, you know, basically... Um, issued a statement saying they support uh, the Texas governor in the resisting, you know, this uh, action from the Supreme Court and um, our governor in North Dakota, Doug Burgum, um, was one of those governors. I think it's kind of just, it was just like all, basically all the Republican governors, except like some of the like more, more moderate ones might have abstained, but I'm guessing there's roughly 25 Republican governors um, in the United States, like probably roughly half the states. Um, oh, the, I, 
I guess I should talk about the um, the Vision Pro from Apple. Uh, somebody asked me recently if I was gonna um, get into that thing because I, you know, they know I'm a kind of a computer aficionado and a big a big Apple uh, uh, fan. And I, I said, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's pretty pretty out there. <laughs> and stuff. I can't imagine what I would use this for that would make it worth like, what is it, $3,500 for this bad boy. There's there's a lot of things I'd want to buy um, for $3,500 before this thing, I will tell you that. But like if, I don't know, if, there, if I did something professionally that made, you know, sense to explore using this as a way to be more productive, um, maybe it would do it, but I just, you know, that's just not the case. So yeah, I've actually been shopping for um, a uh, a new computer on this uh, setup I'm using right here because um, I, I I would like to have something quite a bit faster than what I currently have. I currently have a Mac Mini, um, but I elsewhere in my home I have a Mac Studio, and boy, the difference between the two is just really prominent. Um, everything is so much faster on the Mac Studio. So I've been thinking about trying to maybe pick up like a refurbished one or something for this uh, recording setup where I am here. Let's look at sports, since we are technically a sports channel. What's going on? I think the Mavericks are playing tonight. I haven't checked the score. I'll probably yeah, I'm going I'll drop in on the uh, like the game summary. Once it's done, it's probably, it, the game is probably over at this point, yeah. Um, oh, wow, I didn't see this. Zach Levine out. Um, what else? Caitlin Clark in the news again. I wonder if her cards are going up in value. Their season marches on. Um, all right, nothing too exciting, I don't think, in the in the sports world. Um, what else is going on? The chosen season four. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing else. Too much. Seems too very very interesting to me. Um, so. I don't know, maybe that's it for today. I'd like to get this posted for y'all. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I do like reading the news and uh, um, going through it with y'all and kind of sharing what's happening in the world. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that too. hope you relaxed and uh, um, drifting off to sleep already or will be soon. Um, I guess that's way up for now. Tomorrow we'll have some sports content. I probably am going to do a live stream tomorrow. Sunday, February 4th, so hopefully I'll have an announcement about that earlier in the day. Um, and, uh, yeah, maybe we can do some football cards in honor of the Super Bowl, as somebody suggested in a comment recently. I thought that was a good idea. Uh, I have a few things, um, you know, football card-wise, so probably could do some fun stuff. All right, everybody, catch y'all later. You have a great one, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.